What's up guys, Derek, more plays, more Today we're gonna to be talking about Bryson DeChambeau. This is a guy who a lot of people have been asking me to cover for the past month. It's been on my to-do list. Um, this is a golfer. This is somebody that I have no prior information on. I kind of went into this kind of blind. Frankly, I don't follow uh, the PGA Tour whatsoever. So I had to do a lot of background digging to see exactly what the story was. Apparently he's made quite the impressive transformation over the hiatus and um, over COVID um, while no one's been playing. He's kind of bulked up supposedly. There's so many different articles with different statistics for what he's gained and they're vastly different from one another, even from his diet all the way up to the amount of muscle he's gained. I'm just gonna kind of break down the articles, give you my stance on do I think this guy is natural or not? And if not, what do I think he's doing? So first article is uh, Bryson DeChambeau, trainer addresses steroid speculation ahead of PGA Championship. So this was uh, August 5th, so very recent. So a lot of people are talking about how his attitude is way worse now too, apparently. So he came back from the break, 20 pounds heavier and bombing 400 plus yard drives while notching a win at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. He also started a beef with a cameraman and carted a 10 in a meltdown at the memorial that included a less than cordial disagreement with an official over a ruling. What's behind his bulk? It's all led to whispers speculating how he was able to bulk up so fast. Um, and his trainer said it's been a three year process. We've had the foundation. You're just seeing the end result of it happen quick. The two years of preparation to get him to the point where he could make those changes is really why he's been able to make those changes as fast as he's been able to make it. Um, let's see, like, I don't, how do you prepare your body for a bulk? Like, you just start fucking eating food. Like, is it rocket science? You start eating more and you start training with weights. Like, I don't get what he means here, a three year process and a two years of preparation to get to the point where he'd be able to make those changes to start eating more. Like, does that make any fucking sense? I, I don't know. Anyway, he said the shampoo is not using performance enhancers. Under normal circumstances, you'd say the only way you could make those changes is by taking steroids. Roskopf. Ro How the fuck do you say this guy's name? Roskopf. Rosk. I'm not gonna. Roskopf continued. And I can guarantee you that's not been part of his process and not even a thought in his head. It's just been part of the ev evolution of him being involved in this program and being able to tolerate the forces that his body's been able to tolerate. And those changes in strength have been amazing, but it's all natural from the end of, from this end of it. So, uh, let's see. He consumed 6,000 calories per day. Roskopf said that to shampoo, bulked up the old fashioned way, lots of calories. Roskopf estimates the shambo consumed up to 6,000 calories a day, including a heavy dose of protein shakes en route to his transformation from 190 to 240. So he gained, he gained 50 pounds and he plans to add more weight. So looking at his physique transformation, this was him in 2018. So he looks pretty damn skinny, I guess. Like you can see how lean his face is here. This is 2019, still pretty skinny and pretty lean. And this is a before and after of years ago and current so he is significantly different like i guess this is the 50 pound disparity that they're talking about now and um his current physique you know objectively to a fitness industry person they would see this physique and be like oh this guy is not in that great shape a lot of people who watch my channel will be like this guy's fat <laughs> which is, just shows how fucked our heads are but for a golf player I guess he's jacked and this is what, you know, most people are going by. They're saying this guy's like sauced as fuck, which is what we're going to get to later. Some of the, the tweets about this guy's physique transformation, but the transformation. So this is obviously an impressive amount of weight to gain. One thing I can say off the bat though, is the, um, the sheer weight gained in the time frame is not impossible to do naturally. As far as the proportion that was muscle to fat, I'll get into later, but the amount of weight gained, like when I did my first bulk ever, when I started working out, I was 138 pounds at my same height. And within four months, I had gained 50 pounds, but tons of it was, it was just garbage weight. I probably gained like five to seven pounds of actual muscle maybe. I don't know, that would be 
you know, probably somewhat accurate. And the rest of it was just fucking shit weight. Like I ended it with a gut. And like here, he's he has more muscle on him for sure. But you can tell he's also fatter. With that being said, it's not like you're going to gain fucking 100% contractile tissue when you take steroids either. So it's not delusional to assume that he may have done something here, despite the fact that he's gained fat. Like just because he's gained fat, it doesn't mean it was a natural process. So getting back to some of these articles, um, apparently his attitude has been like shitty lately too. And people are saying <laughs> it's a result of the roids. DeChambo wasn't happy with the cameraman at the Rocket Mortgage Classic on Sunday. However, the cameraman appears to have only been doing his job. Uh, let's see. DeChambo swung his club into the sand after out of frustration after the shot wasn't great. His anger didn't stop there, however. He took issue with a cameraman who followed his movements with his camera as he walked up to the tee and marked his ball after the shot, which is exactly his job. And with nothing else happening at the hole then, it's not like the cameraman was missing out on another critical moment either. DeChambeau even confronted the cameraman after he had finished the hole. He was literally watching me the entire way up after getting out of the bunker, walking up to the next screen. And, and I just was like, sir, what is the need to watch me that long? I mean, I understand it's his job to video me, but at the same point, I think we need to start protecting our players out here compared to showing a potential vulnerability and hurting someone's image. I just don't think that's necessarily the right thing to do. Um, I don't get that, um, personally. DeChambeau said he felt as if the cameraman was trying to paint him in a bad light and that could have damaged his brand, even though he was the one who reacted poorly after his shot. I think if you're on the course, you know you're being videotaped, so like, you kind of just be like cognizant of your, <laughs> your own reaction to shit, I would think. Like, even if you're fucking out on the street, anyone can videotape you and post it anywhere. Like, I don't think you're literally going to an event that you know you're getting paid for it to be televised. Like, would you not expect somebody to record everything you're doing. So I don't get that. Uh, let's see another article on the justification for how his transformation didn't happen overnight. So, you know, alluding to the fact that it was natural and it wasn't some super fast thing. Even if it seems like that's what happened, he gained 50 pounds over the past year. He's been laying the foundation for his body to grow into for several years, culminating with a precipitous and noticeable change in recent months. Because we've had the foundation, you're seeing the end result of it happen quick. Yeah, okay, we've seen that. Again, laying the foundation, like what is that? Like writing on a piece of paper what you're gonna eat and then like grocery shopping? Like that doesn't make any fucking sense to me. As soon as you start bulking, you can gain weight within the next day. I could go eat an extra cup of ground bison and rice right now and start a bulk if I really wanted to. It's not like I need to mentally fucking prepare myself for two years to be like, I need to eat 4,000 calories now. It's not rocket science. DeChambeau is up to 240 pounds now when he leads the PGA Tour in driving distance at 324.4 yards. That's a sharp increase from 302.5 yards per drive average in 2019, 305.7 2018. Okay, so despite the fact that they've been like laying the foundation for years, his drive has essentially remained the same from 2018 to 2019 and then suddenly in 2020 it's jumped up over 20 yards and now he's leading the league so you know that's obviously a red flag in itself it, it, the fact that they've been laying the foundation for several years and now all of a sudden like if you knew what your plan was years ago why is it now all of a sudden that your weight is spiking up 50 pounds like how mentally prepared do you need to be to eat food it makes no <laughs> like to me this makes no fucking sense he gained 20 of his 50 new pounds during the layoff period he's morphing before our eyes into a physical force he told gq recently that he consumes three protein pack meals per day on top of drinking get this six or seven protein shakes adding up to a grand total of as much as 5,000 daily calories when you factor in the eggs bacon sausage and other foods in the diet that's fucking insane six or seven protein shakes like that's like literally throwback to when you first started working out we used to go get mutant mass shakes from the mall because we didn't know how to eat properly like the fact that, that he has a professional trainer that's teaching him to have seven protein shakes on top of whole food meals if you're having more protein shakes than whole food whole food meals you're overseeing some major nutritional flaws that you're doing and how did you plan this out for two years and then you still have this probably micronutrient deficient 
uh, diet model that you're following. Like to me, that makes no sense. How not, it doesn't make no sense that he's doing it. It's just how professional nutritionists or trainers are so like deluded about what the ideal thing to do is. Like obviously it works, but I mean, empty as fuck protein shakes that are just pure protein and spike your fucking insulin levels through the roof and are processing garbage versus whole foods. Like, dude, like, what do you think is going to work better? I mean, my goal is to live to 130 or 140. He told GQ. I really think that's possible now with today's technology. How's that relevant? I don't understand this. So again, this guy's physique has obviously dramatically changed over the years. And I think the main point is the stark difference that occurred during the 20, like obviously everything coincides, like his drive increase with the amount of weight he's gained. Like it obviously is not unreasonable to assume that your strength is gonna go up as you gain mass when you're trying to gain mass. So it's not like, it's odd that all of a sudden his 20, his 20 yard increase in his drive happened. It's just the fact that he got there in such a short period of time relative to what his baseline was, which is clearly a pretty skinny guy. With that being said, his physique doesn't look too different than what mine was when I started or what a lot of my friends were who don't have the most insane genetics ever and still built decent foundations naturally. The amount of time he packed on the weight though is a bit iffy. Looking at him after, again, his physique isn't overly impressive so it's hard to really figure out how much of this is actual muscle tissue we're looking at. He's in golf clothes all the time that are somewhat baggy. I don't really see a physique before and after. I see just sheer mass and I can see it in his face too that he's gained a lot of fat and water. It's not just pure muscle tissue. So he's been eating 5,000 to 6,000 calories every day. Like this claim, 40 pounds of muscle, like it's like it, it was 20 pounds of muscle and it's 40 pounds of muscle. Like how much of it is, do you actually think is muscle? I want to hear from the horse's mouth is kind of what I would like to see to make a more definitive statement here. So his trainer says he gained more than 40 pounds of muscle in a span of what appears to be eight months based on statements by DeChambeau. So actually, let's see, I've never seen the type of changes in an athlete like the one he's made in the last six month period. And then again, he's, you know, took two years to prepare to get to these changes, blah, blah, blah. So the majority of his weight was during this hiatus. From what I can see, oh, this is his actual diet model here. Here's what it looks like on a typical day. His diet is basically just a bunch of protein shakes. But the actual whole food component, breakfast, four eggs, five bacon strips, toast, three protein shakes. Oh, the protein shakes are in here. Jesus Christ, three protein shakes. Imagine your digestive system trying to, just fucking scrambling to produce the amount of hydrochloric acid you need to break down three protein shakes at the same time as the rest of your food. It's just like the most processed shit that could fly through your system. There's no time to actually like figure out what the fuck is going on and assimilate it correctly. Just anyways, I'm just <laughs> overly critiquing his diet. I should get back on track while playing two protein bars, one peanut butter and jelly sandwich, one protein shake every six holes after playing snacks, another protein shake, dinner, steak, two more protein shakes. Jesus fucking Christ. His diet sucks ass. Oh man. Like it works. Calories in versus calories out. Protein is important, but like, damn dude. I've never seen such a shitty diet. Well, actually I have. I review celebrity diets all the time and they're pretty garbage a lot of the time. But uh, let's see. Okay, let's see. This is a video about a bulked up Bryson DeChambeau new swing versus old swing. And I guess this is just comparing, trying to explain why his uh, drive, his, oh, it's up 40 yards. I thought it was just up like 20, 20 ish, according to that first article. So I guess this guy is probably a qualified golfer or something and is uh, trying to explain why the swing is so much better. Like this doesn't even look like the same dude to me. So like this is really throwback to my first bulk where I was a twig and then went to unrecognizable within four months. But I gained way more fat and water than this guy did. And it's hard for me to make a judgment because it's not like I see his lifts. I'm seeing his drive increase. So it's hard for me to actually say if this is unreasonable or not in a natural to enhance perspective. I can't actually gauge it the same way I would, oh, your bench press went up this many pounds. This is the likelihood that this happened. I'm like, what the, like, what does 40 yards equate to in terms of relative terms of natural or not? Um, this one I'm gonna have to really extrapolate on. But anyway, this guy's like comparing the swing I guess this was him before and this is him after. Obviously, he uh, looks a lot more bulky now. 
I'm not even going to attempt to listen to this guy talk about form because I know absolutely nothing about golfing. But a lot of experts are weighing in on this guy and uh, giving their opinions here. He's broken the record here, which was previously um, uh, held by Tiger Woods on a Lynx course, the 05 uh, Championship. Right. So, which, you know, Lynx ball will run and run and run if you find the fairway. 350 yards. Uh, average all week. I just didn't. I, I I just can't believe we're here. I mean, it's been coming, but we're here. Okay, so now he's like breaking records too. Not just his own personal records, but he's breaking like historical records of other players' achievements as well. Apparently, so that is of note. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody is really that surprised uh, inside the game, Joe. As you say, it has been coming. I mean, Rory's up there. I think he was the longest player in the tour last year at, at 325 odd yards or 320 yards. He averages out at. Um, and Bryson has just taken to another level. I like this guy, Joe. I have to say, there's a lot of uh, people very quick to be critical of him. Okay, so obviously this guy is uh, breaking PRs, not even personally, but in the league itself, which is notable. Bryson DeChambeau ranks the season driving distance one. Top driver in the league right now, I would assume. So, What do you make of the bulking up, the adding of speed of the Bryson DeChambeau experiment? You're right, Gary. We are watching the experiment. Uh, Bryson is all about experimenting. He's all about physics. He's all about science. There's nothing wrong with that. We've seen players lose weight and not work out so well because their body types just didn't support that weight loss. We've seen those players gain the weight back and go on and, and, and play pretty well. Uh, in Bryson's case, um, he, he felt like he needed more distance. And, and to his credit... Like he doesn't look like anything special here. I'm looking at him in the gym right now. It doesn't mean he's natural, though. Like, there's a lot of guys who take gear that don't look like traditional meatheads, which is what a lot of people will jump to the conclusion of, is does this guy look like a meathead or not? And he certainly does not, but that doesn't mean... Like, 90% of people that are on gear, you wouldn't even guess are on gear. Okay, and then here he talks about how bulky improved my golf. So this is January 15th, which is notable because a lot of people are talking about how this transformation was done all during the uh, pandemic period. So obviously some of what they prepped beforehand, obviously he's been bulking for a while now. Bryson, you've said bigger and stronger. Why? You are someone, you are meticulous as Robbie rightly points out. Why bigger and stronger? Well, why bigger and stronger? The more mass you have, the more you're able to control that mass and stable and stabilize and contract efficiently, the, the overall more general uh, stability you're going to have when you go out and golf and you swing a golf club. Um, I feel like when I'm swinging now, I feel like, you know, a 15 mile an hour wind used to feel like, or what, what used to feel like an eight mile an hour wind is now, you know, I can feel the same when it's a 15 mile an hour wind, if that kind of makes yeah. sense. So I just feel like in any situation, no matter, no matter what happens, I feel like I'm more grounded. You know, I got more weight to me, about 17 more pounds. I feel like I'm grounded a lot more. Um, so I don't feel like I slip around as much. And just overall, in general, I feel healthier. That's the cool thing about it. So 17 more pounds relative to his baseline. Uh, let's see, on the eve of the Abu Dhabi HSBC Championship, uh, Bryson tells us how adding 17 pounds of muscle and upping his ball speed to 200. So this is obviously just like weight on a scale. I feel like they're not taking into account that 17 pounds of muscle is like literally fucking years of work. And there's no way he put on 17 pounds of muscle prior to the even his big transformation that everyone's talking about. Uh, 17 pounds of like relatively lean weight though is reasonable naturally. However, the period thereafter where he just keeps gaining in a uh, linear fashion is a bit more iffy. There's this article here. This is the one that a lot of people have sent me uh, the other day. Trainer for golfer Bryson DeChambeau understands rush to judgment. He's been talking the game since PGA Tour resumed its schedule in June. Some of it's been, uh, let's see, about whether he was aided chemically to achieve those gains. Even his trainer understands why there might be conjecture. Um, the trainer, let's see, he's worked with the Denver Broncos. He said it's been a three-year process to get to this point. I've heard this part. Last fall, he said he would be undertaking a program to gain muscle and weight. He, he was 190 pounds last fall. Okay, so we know the baseline time frame now. So it was 50 pounds from last fall to current, which is... So from fall to mid-January, he gained 17 pounds. And then on top of that, he gained another 33 pounds, I guess, on top of that thereafter and just kept gaining in a essentially a linear fashion for almost a year straight. That seems, uh, 
I plateaued pretty quick. Let's put it that way. When I did my first bulk and I went, I pretty much did the same thing this guy did. I ate the seafood diet or whatever the fuck that's called, where you see food and you eat it. Not seafood, but you see food. It's a good fucking pun, right? So that is the diet where you just, calories is king and you get tons of fucking mutant mass shakes in, you slam quick mass, you eat as much food as you can until you puke. And then if you puke, you have to eat again and take another shake because you just lost calories. That seems like the diet model this guy's following, probably, probably just short of puking, but I mean, he's doing the same kind of thing. He's just cramming in, not the most ideal choices, but he's getting it in his macros that he needs to grow. He's closing on five to 6,000 calories a day and he's been doing that for a while. Um, he wouldn't be able to gain the type of mass he's gained over the short period of time, eating 3,000 to 3,500 calories, according to Ross Kapuf. It's unusual to see NFL players add this kind of weight, said his own coach. I've never seen this type of change on an athlete that he's made in the last six month period. Holy shit. So, okay, so it was six months specifically. It's a rare occasion. You'll see these athletes get bigger, stronger, faster, but a lineman or a linebacker can come into NFL in their career maybe and gain maybe 10 to 20 pounds. But to see someone gain 50 pounds in that time he's done it is, I mean, kind of unbelievable. So the amount he's gained again, I'm gonna go back to the before and after picture. He's not lean in the after picture. He's far fluffier than he was in the before, but 50 pounds on a natural guy in six months would look a lot shittier than it does on this guy. And I don't think he has phenom genetics because for the first two years where they were prepping and actually working together to get this guy prepared to gain muscle, he was obviously doing some things that are conducive to gaining muscle. And he looked like this in 2018, he looked like this in 2019, and then all of a sudden in 2020, the difference is pretty substantial. Golfer Bryson DeChambeau explained how gaining 20 pounds of muscle changed his game. So this was in June. Dude, like 20 pounds, like is it 40, is it 20? Like make up your fucking mind. Eight months ago, I said, you know what? I want to try and get stronger because of blah, blah, blah. If I could be like Happy Gilmore hitting over 400 yards and hitting it straight, that is a massive, massive advantage. So I set out to do that. I've been healthier and stronger ever since. He definitely could lose some fat, but he could have ended up a lot worse for the amount of weight he gained in that period of time for sure. You can see it in his face. You can see it in his gut. He's definitely fatter than he used to be, but a lot of this was lean weight. Like it probably looks like he's gained 20 pounds of muscle if you actually look like it looks like he's gained 50 pounds of like actual weight but it looks like 20 pounds of actual contractile tissue underneath all this fluff so 20 pounds of muscle muscle in a span of eight months which is i'm gonna fucking define this time frame as eight months hopefully based on this article from him specifically so he's gained like realistically from what i can tell 20 pounds of actual muscle tissue and 50, 40 to 50 pounds of like weight in general. And is 20 pounds of muscle tissue reasonable to expect in that time frame? Like clearly this is very, very odd to see this physical transformation in this sport because it's getting so much media attention. No one else does this apparently, no one. It's kind of odd. You would think a lot of people would focus on this considering it's such a massive part of the game, how hard you can hit the ball, but <laughs> It doesn't seem like many of these golfers really focus on the muscle building component. Maybe like, I don't know, when I was younger and I started working out, the first thing that got fucked up was my basketball shot. My three pointer used to be money. And then after I started uh, working out, the strength increase made my muscle memory like all off and uh, ruined my three pointer. Like I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if this happens to the golfers too. So maybe that's why they don't do it. I don't know, but um, like this article, did Brooks Koepka just suggest that Bryson DeChambeau was on steroids? After adding 30 pounds of muscle during the 91 break from the PGA Tour, DeChambeau is the most talked about golfer on the planet right now. These articles cannot seem to corroborate their statistics. Like this is, none of them have the same statistic. To me, it looks like 20 pounds of muscle. So let's just go with that. PGA Tour's drug testing policy needs a big fix. So this was a few years ago, but probably worth going through here really quick. Let's see. Drug testing program was designed not so much to catch cheaters as to reassure sponsors that are, there are no cheaters to catch. Sounds familiar. The resulting program is too simple, too soft, and too secretive to combat the increasingly sophisticated science of doping according to top officials from WADA and US USADA. HGH is undetectable. Yeah, that's true. I wouldn't be surprised that that's something he's leveraging. The tour admits that golfers might be tempted to take HGH to add valuable yards off the tee because of its potential to increasing driving distance, which is contingent on club head speed. 
honestly, that would be one of the main compounds I would be leveraging if I was a golfer, especially somebody who is very, very highly dependent on joint and ligament integrity and flexibility and mobility and having uh, all the, uh, you know, everything that is connected to your arms, essentially, not having any injuries. So it's not just about gaining muscle, it's also about staying as injury free as possible and enhancing the recovery process and having that um, regenerative effect that you can leverage through growth hormone usage. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what he is. I wouldn't, I wouldn't attribute nearly his entire progress to it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's in his protocol. If all you're doing is testing on events, there's a huge window for athletes to use PEDs and not get detected. Tiger Woods, Phil Mil Mickelson, and Mc Mac Mac fuck McElroy headlined a group of tour tour. Bleh, tour fuck sakes, I cannot talk, guys. I am sorry. McElroy headlined a group of tour stars who told the New York Times in 2013 they had never been tested away from a tournament venue. Well, that's obviously significant. Last March, John Daly called the tour's testing policy a big joke and said he and other tour pros know exactly when they will be tested, a claim the tour denies. That doesn't bold too well for it. Honestly, this sounds pretty much like the same thing as the guys here were getting busted for the, you know, failing the testosterone to epi testosterone ratio in like sprinting in the Olympics and whatnot prior to them stepping things up a bit. Not that the standards are not easily circumvented now either, but prior it was like, basically, are you too dumb to not clear the compound out of your system in time and understand the pharmacokinetics of what you're using? And or are you just choosing something really stupid that the metabolites are easily detectable for months on end in your urine? So, you know, it sounds like the PGA Tour has not really uh, come up to the standard of something like the UFC. And it gives a huge gaping hole of opportunity for guys like Bryson DeChambeau to really uh, capitalize on it. At least that's what I am interpreting. Going to Twitter. Nasty bombs coming in hot tomorrow with Phil Mik Mickelson and McElroy Rory again. Looking forward to the PGA Tour drug testing you at Brian DeShamp. <laughs> Steroids have no place in the sport. You went from 150 pounds four months ago to 320? Do you mean 230? What? Not acceptable. I feel like that guy's statistics are off. Bryson DeChambeau after accidentally breaking his driver at the PGA Champ. I guess it's all those swings I put into it. Crafting crafting laughing crying emoji face are pga players subject to drug testing anybody think bryson DeChambeau got that body without steroids got that body dude this body is not impossible to achieve naturally i would just argue the time frame is a bit condensed for achieving it in the time frame possible relative to his baseline but it's certainly achievable naturally in my opinion for a decent amount of people um, maybe not for everyone though. At ESPN Radio, Bryson DeChambeau, behaviors reminds me of people using steroids, aka hashtag roids, at Sarah Palin US. At ESPN Caddy, at ESPN, holy, look, what? How's this even relevant? <laughs> what the? That's a good gif. That's fucking funny. At Hawkeye Kirk, Captain Kirk, never been a Bryson DeChambeau fan, but it's sad people are assuming steroids led to his bulking up during the tour break. Lots of people have gained 50 pounds during this unique time. Who the fuck is gaining 50 pounds during this break? Like most people can't even get to a gym, let alone gain 50 pounds with almost half of it being pure contractile tissue. At Tappy Tappin, that's simply not true. You don't gain 50 pounds of muscle. In, okay, it's not 50 pounds of muscle. You don't gain 50 pounds of muscle in six months. That just doesn't happen without eight. It's very likely not steroids that he used, but he's using something. So this guy's claiming he gained 50 pounds of muscle, but then he's claiming he used something that's not steroids. Like what, please elaborate on this mystery compound that gains 50 pounds of muscle in six months that is not steroids. I would like to know. LOL, what? First off, it's impossible to gain 50 pounds of muscle in a year, let alone six months. Accurate, all the steroids are not accurate. Second of all, the guy is like 25 to 30% body fat. Also accurate. Actually, I don't know, 25 to 30%. He's definitely not lean. Maybe he's 20%, 20 to 25. Anyone can gain 50 pounds of mostly fat and a little muscle. I'm, you know, I'm sort of leaning on the fence on this one, guys. And I sort of agree with that guy. Let's see, splitting the fairway, a beauty from Bryson DeChambeau with heart eyes. Oof. At 15. 
fucking crack that shit. At C. Rossi, steroids should be banned in all sports. Wake up, PGA. Have you heard of Reuterage? Look at Bryson DeChambeau's behavior lately. Nah, <laughs> nah he was always a prick. <laughs> so, not Reuterage, just being a dickhead. Um, that's funny. At Bryson DeChambeau, this is exactly how stupid you look. Stick to the steroids. You're a joke. Jeez, buddy, it's a bit fucking harsh. At Scotty Mo eight. How many of these people would say this shit to them in person? Like, it's just baffling how somebody gets on the internet, goes to Twitter, and it's like, Haha, fuck this guy, I'm gonna write how he's a piece of shit. Stick to steroids, you are a joke. Like, fuck, dude, you're, you're fucking sick. You're a fucking sick guy, Scotty Morrison. PGA Tour, 423 yard drive, hits approach to six feet, makes the putt. Bryson DeChambeau gets back the even par. Quick hits, hashtag. We go over to the T at one. Look where he is aimed at. I've never seen. He does have a unique looking drive. It almost reminds me of like Happy Gilmore, sort of. I don't know. Maybe I just like don't know. It seems the form seems a bit uh, not as pretty as the average golfer, but I don't know. What do I know? That far to the right. <laughs> wow. To one. Drug test them. <laughs> That's the first fucking comment. People think he's on steroids or fucking stupid. Does his physique look like someone on steroids? He gained like 40 to 50 pounds. He gained an average of 20 yards on his drives. He bulked up naturally. Again, I would uh, encourage you to look up some of the transformations in other sports that they don't end up looking like bodybuilders. People think looking like you take steroids equates to Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, when in reality, most people that take steroids don't even look like they're on steroids. And then the guys who take steroids in sports look like guys like Mark McGuire, guys like Barry Bonds. Are you kidding me at PGA Tour at Bryson DeChambeau hits an eight iron at 220 yards? Dude is hashtag King Kong on the course right now. <laughs> hey Bryson, how do you think that swing will work at the hashtag masters? Don't leave the steroids on your locker shelf like hashtag Mark. Dude, enough hashtags? Like, do you think somebody's going to see your King Kong hashtag and then somehow like get this thing trending? I don't, I don't understand <laughs> what the logic is on this. Like you actually took the time to write to this thinking he's gonna read it. And then you also put in these hashtags to make it like more searchable. I don't understand. Bryson DeChambeau, fat man on steroids. <laughs> Looking good, PGA Tour. Uh, harsh, buddy, harsh. My overarching stance is there's very lax PED testing in this sport. There seems to be a gaping hole of opportunity for guys to take advantage of this because it doesn't seem like anyone really cares to increase their strength and muscle mass in the sport, at least based on what I've seen, like most of the physiques in the sport are, you know, very, very, it's like the one sport you can be uh, not really in shape <laughs> to pretty damn good. I haven't really seen any other sports where you can be like fat and like excel above everyone else. But um, the amount of difference in eight months, so gaining 50 pounds and let's just say about 20 of it is muscle tissue, is that realistic naturally? It's cutting it fucking close, dude. And like you could, you could assert he has high level of high quality genetics and he's just been eating his face off and gained that much muscle. You know, this was really, really on the fence, honestly. And even like you would have to be a genetic phenom to gain even 15 pounds of muscle in your first year of training, in my opinion, just based on the amount of sheer weight this guy's put on 50 pounds. It's, it's impressive. A lot of it is fat and water. So it kind of gives the illusion that this can be done naturally because his physique does not really reflect a traditional steroid user. But it's just the compressed time frame of this being eight months and him gaining what appears to be at minimum 15 to 20 pounds of lean tissue out of the 50, I would I would lean towards not natural. Like even like peak genetic elites, you're going to be hard pressed to find a guy who can gain more than 15 pounds of muscle in one year, let alone eight months. And especially if you're only training for he said he was training. I didn't even, I don't think I put the video in the thing. I watched it separately. He said he was training for, uh, let's see, two days a week for two hour sessions. So he's only training two times a week. Uh, for me, and it's it's completely new. It's a lot of fun, but it's been a lot of work, uh, a lot of working out two days, you know, working out for four hours, a cumulative total, um, and, and eating a lot. So only working out four hours per week with only two sessions and then eating, you know, like kind of not the best diet in my opinion um, and still gaining 15 to 20 pounds of contractile tissue out of that 50 pounds. Um, you know, I would lean towards 
unnatural. Like the amount of strength this guy has gained in such a short period of time, of course, that can be reflective of newbie gains. By the sounds of it, his trainer already had him on a regimen prior to this bulk up phase, though. They've been preparing for years, meaning I'm sure he's not just sitting in his fucking living, living room giving him a motivational talk for two years. I'm sure they've been working out for a couple of years now. So the fact that he's not a newbie to this, where he's actually lifted prior, and the simple, the actual introduction of calories is the only like novel thing here. And he's still only working out twice a week and all of a sudden his gains are spiking through the roof. That leads me to believe that this is not natural and this is uh, reflective of somebody who's using some sort of performance enhancing aid. And my assumption would be HGH probably, if you can't get tested for it. And understanding the pharmacokinetics of testosterone and leveraging it around the around the events and ensuring that it's cleared out of your system in time for testing so make sure you don't trip a basic testosterone to epi testosterone ratio test the likelihood that carbon isotope ratio testing would be pulled out in the pga tour is unlikely in my opinion it's unlikely that they're even getting any testing for metabolite hormones to begin with of you know like foreign agents or anything any anabolic energetic steroids let alone actually going to the extent to test them like they would in uh, the UFC or something. So, you know, everything just leads me to believe the fact that he's been prepping for this for years, apparently, with the same trainer. They've obviously trained together prior. It's not like the guy just fucking, you know, wrote out a plan, just sat on it for two years, and they've been planning, they've been doing some shit. And all of a sudden, now he's gained the 50 pounds and cranked his strength up, cranked everything up, his muscle mass is through the roof. Um, and of course the end physique isn't ne necessarily representative of a guy on steroids, but the amount of muscle he's gained, I feel like is like mo no natural in their first year of training is gaining more than 10 to 12 pounds of muscle. And if they are, you know, they're pretty genetically gifted to be gaining like 12, 15 plus pounds of muscle in a year. Like that's a fucking shit ton. So for this guy to do it in eight months, Jesus. Siri, I'm in the middle of talking. I gotta turn that shit off when I record. So for this guy to do this in eight months to gain more muscle than most people would be able to gain in a year, with the fact that he's already probably started training prior to this, to me, it just seems a bit unrealistic, despite the fact that I was really on the fence of this, but when you factor in all these statistics of when the coach started working with, the, with this guy, the time frame of how much weight he's gained in since the beginning of this like protocol, of this uh, weight gain phase, the eight month period, the amount of weight he's gained, the difference in his actual performance on the golf course, um, his strength, his physique before and afters, like it all kind of adds up to me, leaning towards the unnatural side. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think this was natural or enhanced? Objectively looking at it from all the factors that I have presented and not just saying, look at his physique, he's a fat ass. Like anyone can do this, it's just a bulk. Like to me, it's, uh, you know, you can make the argument, but I just don't see guys gaining more than 15, 20 pounds naturally in their first year. Like, I don't, no fucking genetic, reasonable, like average genetics. Like, this guy isn't an elite by any means. If you look at his baseline physique, he's a skinny, ectomorphic dude. Not that, that, you know, some people, they get annoyed with the body types, but he doesn't support a large amount of muscle on his frame naturally. So for him to put on this amount of weight after being in the sport for a while, you know, and the amount he did in the condensed time frame and having the history of being with this coach prior and, you know, probably having training under his belt. To me, it just, you know, it's a red flag. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Is uh, Bryson DeChambeau natural or not? And if uh, if so, you, th you think he's natural, um, let me know uh, how much muscle you think he gained. Just looking at his gains from start to finish the amount of weight he's gained and the proportion of it that actually looks like muscle tissue to you so this is his baseline this is after shot and this is uh him currently with uh you can almost see a bit of a outline of an ab but he is like you know he's rocking a bit of a muffin top he's got a bit of a genus coming in um it's not really in but it is uh certainly on its way to showing up but he has a lot more mass and lean tissue on his frame. Like it's pretty damn obvious he's gaining a big chunk of muscle. So let me know what you guys think. Please like, comment, subscribe. It helps the algorithm when you guys comment. So, so it is much appreciated when you guys do that. Follow me on Instagram, at more plates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok. 
Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, if you're interested in TRT, HRT, um, in any capacity, I recommend you reach out to them and it's all telemedicine, super convenient from the comfort of your own home. Patient care coordinators go through your blood work A to Z, figure out if you're you know, a good candidate for TRT, if you're a good candidate for any kind of replacement therapy or optimization that may enhance your quality of life, health and performance. Um, if you want to support Gorilla Mode, Gorilla Mind Nootropics and pre-workout formulas, they are the best products in the industry, bar none. Just look at the labels of um, Gorilla Mode compared to your current pre-workout. Look at Gorilla Mode Nitric compared to the label of your current pre-workout. It's pretty transparent in my opinion. And uh, I encourage you to switch. If you use pre-workout, it's kind of uh, self-explanatory what they do, but the synergy between the ingredients and the dosages, no one does it like us. So, um, and anything else I'm associated with. If you want a good diet model, by the way, if you want to gain weight, there is no baseline diet model that I would recommend more highly than the vertical diet. It's linked in the description below as well. It's very newbie friendly way to actually ensure you're hitting your macros and your micronutrient allotments all while being um, optimizing gut health and other things that are going to go completely overlooked and perhaps get given to you by elite trainers like this guy's trainer who is going to tell you to have eight fucking six to seven protein shakes a day on top of a much less than optimal amount of actual whole foods. If you want an actual diet model designed around optimized human performance and health, I recommend you check out the vertical diet. It is worth every penny and it is uh, the best newbie beginner diet in my opinion for bulking up and gaining as much muscle as possible while staying as healthy as possible while doing it. So check that out if you're interested. Talk to you guys soon.